much. I, I just have to say, wow. I mean, Kate, Craig, Paul, these presentations have been <laughs> so fantastic. And I'm just really enjoying being a part of this. So thank you all for having me. And it actually makes me want to give like a totally different presentation, honestly, because I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this what's happening to us? And I like want to talk back <laughs> to you guys. So I'm really looking forward to the Q&A. Um, but I will say, like, some of the things that have come up already have just blown me away. And I know people here are from all different industries um, and all different places, and so I'm going to really try to not spend too much time on the daily news specifically in my presentation. But one thing that's striking me is everyone else on, that's presented so far, they all have these innovation departments. <laughs> I'm like thinking, that is my fantasy, to have an innovation department. I mean, Craig got up here and he said, innovation is a part of the culture of the at IBM. And I'm thinking, wow, like we have no, no one on staff who's in innovation at, at the Daily News. So I'm sure some of you are sort of in position similar to me um, where innovation by scrappiness is what's going on. So I'm definitely looking forward to hearing sort of different perspectives here. Um, anyway, my name again is Sina Alderman, for people, anyone who might have missed it. I've been a lawyer at the New York Daily News for 15 years, and on the side, I'm working on this little project called the Daily News Innovation Lab, and that started about two years ago. So, um, again, just one more little thing, something that Paul said um, that resonated with me is, you have to find people who think the way you think, and that's been a challenge for me at the Daily News, and the challenge in starting the Innovation Lab is I have no staff, I have no innovation department. I'm looking for the people who want to bring change to the organization, and that's what's been going on at the Daily News. So uh, just uh, quickly, I'm gonna talk about really what the Innovation Lab is, how it sort of came about, and a little bit about the impact that it's had on the organization. And then just a few quick lessons learned, takeaways that I think are applicable to any entrepreneurship effort. So the New York Daily News is a huge company and you know, we have one of the top 10 newspaper brands, one of the top 10 newspapers in the country, one of the top 10 news sites in the country. But one of the things we don't have is unlimited, unlimited development resources. We're not a Google or a Facebook. And so as I started, seeing and getting exposed to what was going on in the New York tech scene, I started seeing opportunities. Um, I'll just tell you a quick story. Several years ago, one of our senior editors was at the ONA conference. ONA is one of the largest publisher conferences in the country. So as she was sort of walking down the midway, she saw the Daily News booth on the midway, and she was a little surprised. She thought, I'm a senior editor. I should have known the Daily News was going to be on the midway, but this is cool. You know, I'm going to check this out. And and so she started walking over there, and as she approached, she realized why she hadn't heard. This wasn't a daily news booth at all. The booth was sponsored by one of our startup partners. They had taken a case study from their experience on the daily news, created this wallpaper that just covered their entire booth, and were using their experience to showcase their product, attract new customers, and really distinguish themselves from their competitors. I mean, I think this was really the first hint that there were big opportunities here for the daily news and for the startup communities beyond just sort of signing a contract or entering into a licensing agreement. There were powerful things happening, and this sort of goes back to what I mentioned in the beginning, like just sort of paying attention to opportunities was, was very key. Um, subsequently, we actually had a startup working in our offices that had an exit, and that's what's real, what really got the executive team interested in thinking about innovation efforts. But it really began just by listening to what the startup community was saying, saying to us. So what is the Daily News Innovation Lab and how are we currently working with startups? The founding principle of the Innovation Lab was to collaborate with startups to transform media together. The idea was to invite startups to come into our offices for a six month period. Um, we wanted to create sort of a tech stars or Y Combinator type environment with mentorship and partners and office space and providing other resources. But really what we could bring that was unique was the daily news itself. Our people, access to our digital properties, access to feedback at a very early stage, and then really introductions to other media companies and relationships because as you know and as I've been 
talking to some of you on Twitter about media companies are always watching what everyone else does. So once, once one of these companies is on someone's website, that really helps elevate them and brings them to the attention of a lot of media companies. Our first company that we brought in was a data visualization company uh, called Data Visual. The second, and actually this goes back to something that came up in Kate's talk, um, we just announced this a couple weeks ago, is an ad tech viewability company called Optimira. But the thing that's really interesting about it is it's founded by one of our current employees. So this is a scenario where we had an employee working on a startup and talk about employee retention. Um, this is amazing because not only are we not at risk of losing this employee now, we're helping him and you know, whatever happens, happens. But in the meantime, like this is fantastic for both the Daily News and for this startup, Optimira. And by the way, if this technology works, it solves a problem that all publishers are facing and will allow us to take ad campaigns that we can't take right now, so it could be very powerful. The second project I wanted to share is our Conversations event series. This program really evolved organically out of our first program. So as we were kind of out in the community talking about the Daily News wants to connect with startups and trying to get the message out, we realized that while there were pockets of conversations happening all around the community, there really wasn't one central place that brought these conversations together. We thought the Daily News could become that hub to attract startups, disruptive media, legacy media, educators, journalists, students, all people thinking about these issues facing digital publishing and, and like sort of provide an environment to share ideas and experiences. We launched the event series just one year ago. So far we've had six events. We've attracted over 1,200 people. And I have to say, like just having an outlet to constantly participate in this conversation has been incredibly powerful. The third program I wanted to share is our office hours program. And again, this was a natural, organic outgrowth of the first two programs. So as we were, now we're in an event and startups hear us talking and they hear us say, oh, the Daily News wants to connect with startups. And we start getting inbound. And the inbound isn't necessarily, oh, I want to embed for six months at the Daily News. It's, you know, I'd love to get feedback. I'd love just a meeting. And, and again, like just the opportunity to interact with people who are tackling problems in, that are facing our company and legacy media companies in a completely new way, incredibly powerful. So, uh, you know, What's the, the Innovation Lab done for us so far? First of all, in terms of our staff, it's great for the employees. It gives people an outlet to participate in a way they never could have before. In the case of this one company, they're actually participating in the lab, which is fantastic. Um, being out in the community and part of these conversations, again, incredibly powerful. And probably one of the best things we're doing right now. I mean, working with a startup company one at a time, it's, it's great and you're really impacting those people. But having an outlet where you can interact with hundreds of people on a constant basis, it's, it's very, it's very, it's, it's incredibly powerful. And it's just bringing new ways of thinking into the organization. Hearing how people outside of legacy media are tacking, tackling our challenges is opening us up and, and empowering us to think about our challenges differently. You can see this just by looking at how our partnerships slate has changed over the last few years. Historically, we've worked with enterprise partners, very large branding partners. If you look at our partners today, we're working with dozens of partners, lots of startups, some successful, some failures, but everything, everything is sort of open and these partnerships are accounting for more and more of our revenue every month. So just a few quick entrepreneurship lessons learned I wanted to share. One is manage expectations. So as I mentioned to mention in the beginning, the thing that really got the attention of, of the senior management and made them sort of start listening to suggestions about possibly working with startups was when a startup company that was in our offices had an exit. And the initial thinking was, this is amazing. Like we could start a program and we can have 10 startups and over time, you know, we'll have all these exits and it'll be this you know, seven figure revenue stream for us. Um, if that's why you're thinking of engaging with the startup community, I would say just stop right there. I mean, that's not gonna happen. Most startups fail. 
But the thing is that there are all these other benefits that come from interacting with the startup community, and that's the reason why it's important to engage and participate. So, you know, the, the impact slides that I was sharing before about the employee engagement and participating in new ways of thinking, I think those are the achievable goals that, that you can offer to your management when you're trying to pitch something like this. Recruiting up. So in addition to finding like-minded people to help support you in your, your efforts, you know, I literally had to go and ask people in the company to sign, kind of do more and, and participate in this project. Um, it was very important to manage the leadership as well, to make sure that there was support, again, that Paul was mentioning, to make sure that people weren't going to try to be naysayers and undermine what I was doing, but really just to include everyone in the organization, make sure everyone felt like they were a part of it, and just, for, again, just provide opportunities to participate, but also give people an opportunity to support you. Um, this refers to the actual projects that we were going out and working with the startups on. So when we first went out to the community, we sort of put out kind of specific initiatives that we wanted to work with startups on. One was data visualization, one had to do with community building, and one had to do with analytics. But selecting those projects was very tactical. Like you had to stay away from things that could really break the business, right? You didn't want to do things that someone else was already working on because that could sabotage you know, your recruiting efforts. So, uh, so for example, um, one of our challenges is we don't, even today, all of the paper, all of the content that's in the paper doesn't necessarily get onto the website because there's so much design that has to happen that some of it just never, never gets translated. So one of the ideas that we had was, wouldn't it be great if we could have templates that would allow some of that content just to get dragged in so it wouldn't require separate design and you know, that could help monetize this content that's just you know, living for one day. It could live on the web forever. The problem with that project is it integrates with our content management system. So anything that could possibly break our content management system wasn't a project I wanted in the innovation lab. Like that would not work. And the last thing I would share is, and again, this goes back to the first point I made, is really just let it evolve. Be open to any possibility. Be open to opportunities. When I started this program, I never in a million years thought I wanted to do events. I didn't think, that just wasn't on my radar screen at all. And now, the events is like really one of the best things we do. When we started office hours, I thought it was a give back to the community. I thought it was the daily news doing its part to help the community, to help support this like ecosystem of sharing. But really what happened is people came in and helped us open our minds and helped us think about problems differently and also gave us sort of an early warning system into products that might be available to us down the line that were going to help us and, you know, and showed us directionally where the business might be going. So in closing, I would just say you never know what's going to happen. Um, I like that Yogi Berra quote from earlier today, but, but that's a good thing that you don't know where you're going. Let it take you, let, you know, just go with it. Let, let it naturally grow, and you'll be surprised where you end up. Thank you so much.